is going to be a great day. I am Nikki G, your host, and welcome to The Lone Doctrine. I am your weekly dose of constructive food for thought. This month, we've been talking about how to ease your mind, or in other words, how to turn down the volume on negativity. If you're just tuning in with us, what's up? I invite you to go back to the beginning of the month in order to really dive deep into the subject at hand. Every month we pick a topic and explore different ways towards getting our mind on the right track and living an awesome life. I was once told that our thoughts are like a movie playing in our mind. And if we achieve becoming the observer or the audience, we'll have a better chance of not letting the negative take over our lives. Have you ever noticed that when you're stressed, worried, or nervous, your mind goes in all directions with what ifs? Maybe I should have. I forgot. What if it doesn't work? I'm making a mistake, etc., etc., etc. The mind can be quickly consumed by negativity. So today, I'd like to discuss ways to ease your mind. Now, as our dedicated listeners know, I like to share other points of view from time to time. I feel it's important to stay open when it comes to our mental well-being because our minds are full of a vast spectrum of colors and no one person is the same. I myself have spent many years through my studies and experiences exploring many means, and I hope to share them all with you as well as many more that are waiting for our arrival. But today, let's dig into nine ways to calm your anxious mind by Melanie Greenberg. Anxious thoughts can overwhelm you making it difficult to make decisions and take action to deal with whatever issue bothers you. Anxiety can also lead to overthinking, which makes you more anxious, which leads to more overthinking, and so on. How can you get out of this vicious cycle? Repressing anxious thoughts won't work. They will just pop up again, sometimes with more intensity. But there are more effective techniques you can borrow from mindfulness-based stress reduction and cognitive behavioral therapies. Now, the following are nine strategies to help you get unstuck and move forward. Number one, attempt cognitive distancing. Try to see your anxious thoughts as guesses, not facts. Your mind is trying to protect you by predicting what could happen. But just because something could happen doesn't mean it will. Look at objective evidence. How likely is it that the negative outcome will actually happen? And which do you think is most likely to happen based on past experience and other information you have about the situation? Number two. Try cognitive defusion. Stop being fused to your thoughts. Think of your thoughts as moving data passing through your mind rather than the objective truth about a situation. Our brains are hypersensitive to threat and danger because this kept our ancestors alive in the wild. Some of your thoughts may just be automatic conditioned reactions generated by a brain that is oriented to survive. Choose whether or not to believe these thoughts rather than just accepting them. Number three, practice mindfulness. Practice observing your thoughts rather than reacting automatically to them. Think of your thoughts as clouds floating by. Which draw you in and which want to make you run away? Is there a way you can untangle yourself and just observe your thoughts rather than reacting? This is what I brought up earlier. Side note. It will benefit you, especially with the overstimulation that we experience in our everyday lives to become the observer of your thoughts. Number four, 
Focus on direct experience. Your mind makes up stories about who you are and about your safety and lovability. Not all these stories are accurate. Sometimes our minds are biased by negative past experiences. What is your experience in the present moment? Is there something that is actually happening or something that might happen? Notice that they are not the same thing, even though your mind may treat them as the same. This is something that I experience all of the time. I have to step back and realize that all the stories, the crazy movies I'm playing in my mind have nothing to do with reality. And nine times out of 10, if 10 times out of 10, what is happening in my mind never comes into existence. As much as we think that we have control, as much as we think that we know what's going to happen and we know what they're going to do and they're going to say, and this is inevitable, we do not know what the future holds. And all we have is now. Number five, label things. Label the type of thought you are having rather than paying attention to its content. If you notice worry that you're going to fail or experience a loss, label it as worrying. If you are criticizing yourself, label it as criticizing. This gets you away from the literal content of your thoughts and gives you more awareness to your mental process. Do you want to be spending your time judging and worrying? Are there less judgmental or worried ways to the situation? This is what I'd like to call getting to the root. A lot of times when the negative mindset comes in, we're overtaken and all of a sudden going 5,000 miles an hour with more and more and more and more negative scenarios that do not exist. And we get lost in the scenarios rather than getting to the root of what we're actually just feeling, whether it be judging, worrying, criticizing, sadness, fear, whatever it may be, get to the root. Number six, stay in the present. Is your mind regurgitating the past? Just because something negative happened in the past doesn't mean it has to happen today. Ask yourself if the circumstances or your knowledge and coping abilities have changed since the last time. As an adult, you have more choice about whom you associate with and more ability to identify, preempt, or leave a bad situation than when you were a child or a teenager. And as a child or a teenager, and as the adult in the child or teenager's life, it is up to you to create the action and to be the example for how they can identify, preempt, or know when to walk away from a bad situation. We, of course, learn this little by little through experience by experience, but the past doesn't do us any good in the here and now. Here's a quote of food for thought. Everybody's got a past. The past does not equal the future unless you live there. Let's keep going. Number seven, broaden your view. Are you focusing too narrowly on the threatening aspects of a situation rather than seeing the whole picture? Anxiety makes our minds contract and focus on the immediate threat without considering the broader context. Is this situation really as important as your anxiety says it is? Will you still care about the problem in 5 to 10 years? If not, then ease up on the worry. Number 8. Get up and get going. Worrying over an issue without creating a solution will not help you solve the problem. It may in fact make you less likely to act by feeding your anxiety. When your mind is stuck in a loop, 
you can interpret it by getting up and moving around or doing a different task or activity. When you sit back down, you should start to have a different perspective. This is really powerful. Side note, I go walking when I find myself starting to spiral into the negative or just find myself not really creating the momentum I know my day and my life needs, I go on a walk. It could be a five-minute walk. Sometimes it ends up being an hour walk. Whatever it may be, find that action that gets you up and gets you going. When I come back from my walk, my perspective is definitely different. Number nine, decide whether a thought is helpful. Even if a thought is true, doesn't mean that it is helpful to focus on it. Not all the time. If only one in 10 people will get the job you seek and you keep thinking about those odds, you may become demotivated and not even bother applying. This is an example of a thought that is true, but not helpful. Focus your attention on what is helpful and let the rest go. So these are nine ways to calm your anxious mind. Go back again and listen to these. See if any of them stand out to you. And if they do, write yourself a checklist, especially if you experience a lot of anxiety, whether it be day-to-day anxiety or anxiety about something new coming or someone coming over. Wherever your anxiety finds itself, start to make a tool set that you can use in the moment to get you through your anxious mind. So as you go back and listen to these things, take note, what might work for you? Remember here at The Lone Doctrine, we want to broaden your view. We want to allow you to stay open and to come to a place where you can gain lots of tools for your own Lone Doctrine, your own toolbox towards making today better than yesterday. If you found value in the loan doctrine, we would be so grateful for your support. We hope you'll help us reach our goal in order to serve you better and bring you super cool content. We've partnered up with Patreon. Patreon is a place where you can support your favorite creator, hopefully one being the loan doctrine. And even giving $1 a month will go a long way. Thank you so much for your consideration, your support, and a special thank you to our current patrons who make the Lone Doctrine possible. We hope to see you at patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Lone Doctrine. And until next time, keep fighting the good fight. It's a-